you here tonight at Whitfield Baptist Church. Good to be back. Let's sing page 498, When We All Get to Heaven. Aren't we looking forward to that day, when we all get to heaven? Sing it out. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, he'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, we'll overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. All right, how many are you looking forward to the day? We get to heaven. Amen. We're going to be rejoicing. Now, it, it's a Wednesday. I get that, right? We're, we're, we're trying to get through the week right now, right? But we're looking forward to heaven one day. And so let's sing this song in anticipation of that. And let's sing it out on that chorus like we are rejoicing, because that's what it's all about. We're rejoicing. And so where it says there, shout, I want to hear you shout, all right? Shout the victory. I want to hear you a little bit on that shout. So let's sing it out real good on that third and fourth verse. And let's shout it out on the chorus. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's sing it on that third verse. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the tolls of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Better, better. I'll sing that fourth verse. Onward to the prize before us soon. the street of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory Amen. let's go Lord in prayer thank you for being in the service tonight Good Wednesday night congregation. And uh, let's be sure to get your prayer request in. We're going to have a special time of prayer. I promised Brother Jeremy this afternoon that we'd be praying for Bo. And there's no change. And uh, they're just waiting for more tests to come back. And he's still got a relapse of this d disease. And uh, they pray it will pass. And he is still active as he always is. So, Bo, you can't slow him up. Amen. And thank God for him. So we need to pray for our missionaries and for their families, okay? So let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, thank you for this time together. And <clears throat> Lord, thank you for um, this series we're in on the foundations for the Christian life. And Lord, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to help us crucify the old flesh. And Lord, we just pray to your God we'd be yield more of ourselves to you than ever before. Thank you, God, for the good week we've had. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving... Uh, Jason, back his health so he can be here. And we pray, Lord Jesus, you just uh, use this prayer meeting, uh, Lord, to make an eternal difference in many lives. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that. Right, let's sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, page 460 in your hymn books.
singing you may be seated or usher is going to come forward we're going to receive the offering does anybody need a midweek uh, a bulletin raise your hand if you need a bulletin if you'll raise your hand does anybody need a prayer request um a prayer request sheet does anybody need one of those if you will if you'd like to turn those in during the offering when it comes by that helps us during our prayer time if you'll do that um and we won't have to call on as many if y'all want to write those down and we'll just read them um all right if you will get your bulletin out your midweek and look at that let me give you a couple of announcements, um, and then we're going to receive the offering tonight. We are starting our new Sunday School series. We'll be starting that this coming Sunday. We just finished up our, our series last Sunday, reviewed First Kings, and now we're going to start on Second Kings. We're going to get right into it. And the, um, the title of our series for Second Kings is Be Distinct, Standing Firmly Against the World's Tide. And I'm telling you, there couldn't be a more relevant title and theme than that right now. This world is going in the opposite direction of God and of, of, of Christian values. And we're going to have to learn to stand firmly against those things. So this ought to be a helpful uh, series for us. So get in there. Make sure you're in a good Sunday school class. And we have a Sunday school class for all ages. I mean, we start, we got nursery all the way up to... We, we, we got them in an in in assisted living home, so we got them everywhere. So you make sure you find a Sunday school class. There's somewhere for you at 10 o'clock. Be here. Uh, ladies Bible Study, they've started a new series on 30-day walk with God in the Psalms. So they're doing that throughout July. They won't be doing it in August, but they're doing that Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, Backpack Sunday, that is going to be July the 31st. That's the last Sunday of, uh, of July. And they're going to be uh, getting the school supplies ready and the backpacks. If you want to help with that, see Miss Janet. Um, she's, she's sort of in charge of that. I think Miss Rose helps out with that. And so you can see Miss Janet, see Miss Rose, uh, the girls, if y'all want to uh, help with that. Um, it's amazing, but we, we're going to have it a week later, but they already started school by that time. They, they're starting school like that first Friday of August or something ridiculous. Isn't that not crazy? But anyway, so Backpack Sunday is going to be that last Sunday of July. And then in, Ju uh, in August, we start our awesome preach in August. All of our Wednesday night services are going to be on Tuesday night. So our midweek will be on Tuesday night. We'll have a meal at 545, and we'll have um, some special preachers and some great uh, singing going on during the uh, 7 o'clock is when we'll have that. Um, and so please uh, make sure you plan on being here every Tuesday night, uh, if at all possible, be here for those. Uh, in classes, we are, each class is going to have assigned a meal that they're going to be doing, so make sure you get with your class and uh, help with that in your Sunday school class. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless as we uh, receive the offering tonight. All right, Brother, Brother Pete, would you please lead us in prayer as we receive the offering um, this evening? Amen.
moment, get your bulletins out. Look on the back. We have our missionary of the week, and Miss Linda is going to read that prayer letter. It's the Doolittles uh, to Brazil. On the front of your thing, the secretary person made a mistake. It says to the Brazil, but I mean, I guess there's not another one, so that works. All right. Okay, this is their March and April prayer letter. Uh, I did email them, but they hadn't had a chance to contact me back. So we're going to read this one. Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God Amen. in Christ Jesus. In the region of Brazil that we are in, we have two seasons, wet, very wet, and dry, very dry. We are now saying goodbye to the rainy season and welcoming in the dry season. As you would expect with the dry season, most of all the plants and grass start to dry up and change to a brown color. What can stay green literally gets covered with dust. The dust will get so bad that you can smell, feel, and taste it. Even though humanly we may not be excited about the dust, in a spiritual way, it reminds me of the great mission that we must get the gospel everywhere, covering everything so that the lost person can smell, feel, and have the opportunity to taste the great salvation that he has to offer. But things are not dry spiritually. We continue to see God work in the lives of the people. Of all those that left during the pandemic, all but one family have returned. And this one family recently started returning to services. This is truly exciting as our numbers are greater than before the pandemic. Our membership has grown as well. We now have some other ladies that are helping with teaching the children, which is a great blessing to us, especially Kelly. It's been great to see people volunteering to help. We will be starting soon with the training of two men, possibly more to help with the teaching and in the future, the preaching of God's word. Pray that God will direct us as we help these that want to serve at a greater capacity. On April 10th, Eloah, the young girl whose family is already part of the church, accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. She's 10 years old. Pray for her walk with the Lord. In the month of March, we celebrated the fifth year anniversary of the church with our Faith Promise Missions Conference. Pastor Andre, our guest speaker, and his wife, Marletta, were an encouragement to our church family. The international dinner on Saturday night was a true blessing, but, but most importantly, we saw God work in the hearts of his people. The people committed to an increase in monthly giving, so we will be able to do more for missions in 2022. Praise the Lord, he says. On Easter, we had a sunrise service at 5.30 a.m. Okay, how many of you are going to be here at 5.30 a.m.? Not me, thank you. On Easter, we had a sunrise service at 5.30 a.m. That is always a blessing, and after that, a breakfast that everyone participated in. At 9 a.m., we had our Sunday school for the church and the bus kids with the Easter story. And, of course, the evening service focused on Easter as well. It's always a special time of the year for us as Christians that we can celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As mentioned in the last letter, we are needing to build Sunday school classes. Many things have changed here in the last couple of years regarding construction codes. So it's taken us a bit longer in getting things together, but we are hoping to have a definite cost by the middle of May. Please pray for this project and the involvement of our people here in it. We are so grateful for your love toward us, demonstrated through your prayers on our behalf and the financial gift. God has used you greatly in the work here. Thank you. Joyfully serving him, Stephen and Kelly Doolittle. All right, let's go ahead and look at our bulletins here. Let's go into our prayer time. I'll ask Brother Kevin if he'll come and pray for us here in just a few minutes whenever we're done with this. Look on the uh, front of your bulletin there. 
and let's look at our ministries. Uh, this week's ministry is the soul winning ministry and how important that is. Uh, this week's deacon is Brother Mark and Miss Julie Kozell. Uh, this week's Sunday school class is a youth boys class. And uh, this week's missionary is the Stephen Doolittle family, missionaries to Brazil, which we just read their letter. Uh, this week's home missionary is Brother Kevin and Miss Rebecca Hall. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> right, I, I think that that's wrong. I mixed that up there. That's the second mistake that person's made on this front sheet here. <laughs> the Brazil. I don't like the Brazil. But anyway, all right, so it's Kevin and Corley Hall, our missionaries of the week. So our home missionary of the week. So let's be praying for them. Uh, let's do... Let's do remember Miss Rebecca, though, and Bo, as uh, Bo's been having the medical issues. So let's be in special prayer uh, for them uh, also this week. And then our preacher of the week is Brother Joe, Miss Lisa Nelms, uh, Family Baptist Church in Lebanon, uh, Tennessee. Um, got a couple that we're going to read here. Um, let's pray. Uh, let's see. Uh, for John, Brother John's pain to subside with the therapy. And then for lost family members, how many of you have lost family members that you're praying for? Look around. Let's, let's look around and pick out somebody, and I want you to pray for that person's family member. All right? I want you, when we go to our prayer time, I want you to find somebody, raise their hand, and you pray specifically for their family member. Uh, Brother Andrew asked prayer uh, for Anthony and Tim Holsenback, for Sheila Gregory, for David Summerall, for um, Harvest Baptist uh, Church for the Death, Silent Word Ministries in Tri-State, which is going to be going on tomorrow. Let's pray for that. For USA, for revival, and for some unspoken requests. Um, let's, Miss Jackie asked prayer for Ellie and for Alex, salvation. Uh, for Shelly and family. For George, her son. And Susan Gilly. And then um, Lee for health issues, for Lee's health issues. Um, Brother Bobby Thaxton asked prayer for lost family members and sons. And then Brother Jeremy asked us to pray for Brother Tony Hyatt. He's the pastor of, a pastor of Calvary Baptist Church up in... Uh, Tunnel Hill had a bad fall and is recovering from that. So let's be praying for him, for Philip and Linda Bird, uh, for Brent Leslie's salvation, and then for some unspoken um, requests. All right, does anyone else have any uh, spoken requests that you would like to share with us? Raise hand, anybody? Amen. Wonderful. Amen. That's great. Yeah, let's continue to pray for Misty and Emery. Misty and Emery. I think that Misty has gone home, and uh, Emery is still up there and could be up there for several weeks. So just pray for him. He was like two pounds and nine ounces, I think. I think that's what it was, two pounds and nine ounces, something like that. And they put... Alan's hand beside him, and it was about that, that size of his hand, and so, but that's precious, and they say he's doing really well um, health-wise. Brother Randy? Pray for Randy's wife and son. All right, anyone else prayer request? Yes, ma'am, Miss Rose. Just remember our bus ministry. Amen. Excited about what the Lord's doing there. Yes, sir, Brother Justin. Let's remember these unspoken requests. All right, anyone else prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. All right, so Jackson, that's next Wednesday. Jackson. All right, saw another hand. Yes, Holly. Remember Holly's dad. All right, more prayer questions. Miss Nancy. Gerald McPherson. Okay. All right, I saw another hand. Yeah, Andrew. All right, anyone else prayer requests? See any more hands? Miss Chris. Yep. 
Or what was his name? Blake. Or Blake. We've had Josh, right? Josh is the one. Now, who is the one that, that sings? It's uh, Josh. So Blake is his brother. Okay, Blake's the oldest. Okay, let's remember Blake Jordan. All right, anyone else prayer request? Miss Jackie, I'm sorry. I see hands, and they're all pointing this way. I, I didn't. I didn't get around. <laughs> yeah, let's remember Brother Howard, uh, Clore, and his help, and Miss Patricia. All right, anyone else prayer requests? Yes, bro. Remember Faith's mom, yes. All right, any other prayer requests? Okay, well, let's come to the altar and let's pray for these requests that have been spoken and the unspoken requests. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pray together over these while we're meeting tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Kevin if he'll come and lead us in prayer um, for these prayer requests this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to come together and to, to open your word and to learn more about it, and to come closer to you, Lord. Thank you for this, for allowing us to be able to gather together in fellowship and uh, to lay our needs before each other and to pray for each other and support each other through everything that we've got going on. I pray for Misty and Emery, and um, it's, a, uh, it's great that they were able to bring him, uh, <clears throat> just bring him in, and that uh, they've got a lot to, to go through now, but um, a lot of the big worries are, are over as far as um, having a, a su successful delivery, Lord. Pray for Jackson as he's going to have his tonsils removed, that everything would go smoothly with that, Lord. Pray for Holly's dad as he's um, having his, his health issues, that you just... Uh, give him the, the courage to to go ahead and go to the doctor and get that taken care of. Pray for um, <clears throat> uh, Gerald McPherson, um, Angie, and Blake Jordan, and Howard, and uh, Faith's mom, and so many people that are dealing with cancer. And just pray that you would help to have the doctors um, do what they need and be able to make the right choices and provide the right treatment and to help uh, help them get through it as easily as possible, Lord, and that in those situations, I pray that your will, your will would be done. And uh, the family members that are having to go through that struggle along with them, Lord, I pray that you would put their hearts at peace and um, whatever whatever is the outcome, that your will is all that we seek after and that you would help to make sure that no matter how tough things are, that the church is there to support them and that we're there and um, that you're there through all of it, Lord. Pray for Daryl and Kathy's boys and um, that you would watch over them, Lord. Pray for the bus ministry as we continue to grow it and strive to bring more people to to the church so that we can teach more and more and see more souls saved, Lord. Pray for all the unspokens uh, that everyone has. Pray for Joel with the travel. Pray for our country, Lord, and that you would just help to give direction to those in power and that we could see a, a revival and a turn back to you, Lord. Uh, give a praise of it. Ariana being saved, Lord, and that's just so wonderful and great that um, another person has been added to the kingdom, Lord. Um, pray for Brother John's back pain and uh, the physical therapy that he's going to be going through, and just pray that you would help to 
heal him and get him back to 100%, and that way he can get back to doing everything that he wants to do, and we know that he wants to be here, Lord. And just pray that you would help him to uh, recover swiftly from that, Lord. Pray for Tony Hyatt and Philip and Linda Bird. And pray for Brent Leslie for salvation, Lord. Pray for all the lost family members that we have. And they just sit so heavy on our hearts, Lord. I just pray that you would encourage us and motivate us and help us to <clears throat> use us to reach those people in any way that we can and just continue to be a light to those people, Lord. Pray for Ellie and Alex for salvation and pray for um, the health problems that uh, many people are going through right now. Pray for Anthony and Tim Holson back and that you would just continue to work with them, Lord. Pray for all the, all the other people that um, we've got our hands in hands involved with and everyone that we're wanting to help bring together or help through any tough situations, Lord. And just pray that you continue to lead and direct us as a church, Lord, <clears throat> that you would help us to yes, act as one and have oh, unity yes. among the church Thank you, Lord. and help to continue to inspire us and have us have a thirst for knowledge and to to understand or at least to strive for understanding of your word so that we can help spread it to the the people that we meet and just pray that you would give us opportunities to witness to people and to build those relationships that can bring more people to you lord thank you for all the blessings that you've given us and how you've allowed us to have this church and have this meeting and uh, have the freedom to do so lord and the ability to get here and yes. all the things that you've done yes. to put us in this position where we can come together and fellowship and love each other and care for each other. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. And I just thank you that we've got this day to continue to praise you and glorify your name and lift you up. Thank you for all you've done. Amen. Amen. It's all stand. As you get back to your place, let's turn to page 389. I am resolved no longer to linger. On the first couple verses, let's shake each other's hands, make each other feel welcome.
no longer to linger. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have eluded my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and Greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he has the words of life. so glad and free Jesus greatest highest I will come to thee I am resolved to follow the Savior faithful and true each day heed what he saith do what he willeth he is the living Sing that last verse. I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, we'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and Greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Amen. You may be seated. Our pastor is going to come and have the special for us tonight. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to sing the verses, and y'all going to sing the choruses of this old song. It's under funeral services in my file, and... Uh, I never sung this song. Some of y'all might have sung it, but if I'm stepping on your song, and it's my, my, I'm sorry because I don't remember. Amen? But I'll tell you who did sing it that I remember very well, and that was Johnny McNeese. <clears throat> he was backed up by the choir, and he was going through a terrible time in the eyes of most men and ladies. His wife had MS. She couldn't get out of the bed for 15 years. And um, she withered down to just a skeleton. But he never gave up. And he always praised the Lord. And I remember him singing this very song. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it should be there all the day long. While there are others living about us never molested though in the wrong when death has come and taken our loved ones it leaves our home so lonely and drear then do we wonder why others prosper Living so wicked year after year. Sing it with me now. Father alone will know all about it. Will understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Sing it now. Come on. Act like you're going to heaven. All the night, 
faithful till death, said our loving master, a few more days to labor and wait, tolls of the road will then seem as nothing, as we sweep through the beautiful cave, when we see course one more time. Father alone will know all about it. We'll understand why my brother in the sunshine will understand it all by and by. Well, glory, got through that. Amen. All right. My doctor told me not to do anything stressful until he had further test. And that's the most stressful thing I ever done. It's seen. Amen. All right. First Corinthians chapter six. We're going to continue. And I hope I got my notes because they froze up a while ago. That's the plight of high technology notes. But I couldn't see them. Thank God, Miss Rebecca. Got those words to that song. Amen. I'm going to preach from my favorite verses in the Bible, some of my favorite verses in the Bible. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. My second message was on this subject. You're not your own. These hands are not my own. These eyes are not my own. Uh, this tongue is not my own. Sometimes I wonder why I get in so much trouble talking. Uh, this hair is not my own that I used to have. Amen. My feet, my brain. It's not my own. They're the Lord's. And if, when, you feel, when you realize the ownership of, the, of God in your life, you're on a long ways to growing and glowing and being effective for the Lord. Adrian got saved Monday night. That ought, we ought to rejoice all night long on one child getting saved. Amen. One young lady getting saved. What a blessing. And folks, when you get saved, something happens miraculously. Amen. You're born of the Spirit. And we preached the last two weeks on uh, when, you're, when you have the Spirit of God, he, he draws you. That was the second message, the second point. He convicts you, and then he illuminates you. He doesn't eliminate your mind. He illuminates your mind that you might understand the gospel, that you're a sinner. So you've got you to understand you're lost before you can get saved. Amen? And only by the Holy Ghost can you be drawn and convicted and converted. But after you get saved, as I preached on last week with a long outline that some of you took home and shared, and thank God one person got assurance of their salvation through it, thank God, um, is that uh, he, and he, he seals us. That means he stamps his approval, his authority. Nobody can rob that seal. When I, used, when I, worked in, uh, when I was working my way through uh, college um, at uh, Georgia State University, majoring in business, I worked at a place called UPS, and it was the main hub of the southeast, and we'd load these trucks, and we'd have these people with whistles, and they'd stand over you, and they'd yell at you, and you had to have a tight wall all the way up these Mack trucks, and you'd load them, and you'd be on the conveyor belt. I made $3.75 an hour, and I thought I was making a whole lot of money and paying for my tuition. But I want to tell you something. After we got that truck full, they'd get this seal. They'd register the number and they'd seal it. And it couldn't be broken until that truck got to its destination. And folks, I want to tell you something. The Holy Spirit seals you until you get to heaven. Amen? Amen. 
and folks, I want to tell you something. A lot of people worry about that, losing their salvation. They get saved 15 dozen times. I don't know about, I'm not talking about just children either. I mean adults. Uh, they worry. They didn't keep it. Well, you didn't, you didn't work for it, so you can't unwork for it. Amen? It's a gift of God, and I, I like to say these things on terms where I can understand it, and God's not an Indian giver. Amen? It's a gift to God from Jesus, and, and, you're a, and salvation is a gift to you. And so thank the Lord. But tonight, I want to preach on the Holy Spirit indwells you. The Holy Spirit indwells you. And I want to answer this question. Why does he indwell you? And so let's stand on the Word of God in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. I know a lot of you are really tired. You've been working since 5 o'clock this morning down in the sun and humidity. Thank God for you being here. And I appreciate you so much. And we'll try not to be long so you can get to bed by 9.30. Not that I'm going to preach at 9.30. But look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll read verses uh, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Why don't you think about that just a second? You're a tabernacle of someone besides yourself. You're born of the Spirit. It says, which is in you. Thank God the Holy Ghost is in you, which ye have of God, and you're not your own. For we are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I want you to notice the word spirit in the last verse is little s. That means your disposition. It means your attitude. And when you have a sorry attitude, you're going to have some sorry action. Say amen. And reaction. So we have to keep our mind stayed on Christ. You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you that after a while we'll understand all about all that we're going through. I thank you for every prayer request, some that were called in right before the service, of people that would love to be here and they're watching by way of internet because of sickness. And I thank God for the media ministry that allows us to come to people's homes when they can't be here. But we sure appreciate the privilege of being here. And Lord, I don't take it for granted. Because one day, uh, I won't be here. And these folks won't be here that's gathered here. We'll all be in heaven. But Lord, until then, help us not to question you, but trust you. And help us, Lord, to yield to that person inside of us, the Holy Spirit. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was a teenager, many years ago, um, I went to the movies. I don't go to the movies now much, unless it's cartoons. And um, I remember I went to see a, a, a wonderful, thrilling, wholesome movie called The Exorcist. I mean, that was really wonderful, wonderful choice of movies to attend. I think I attended with my mother. I think we walked to Glenwood, Glenwood Road, down Canada Road. I took my mother to watch it. That was a real mistake. I got rebuked after that, after that movie. But, I mean, it was a demon-possessed girl, and her head would go all the way around and come back. And I thought that was the funniest thing. I made fun of the movie the whole time. And uh, she was wicked and strong. And then one time, several years later, I was out visiting Reedsville, Georgia, at a um, young lady that attended our church. She was an older teenager. And she started speaking in this deep voice and, she got mad at us and started cussing us. And she threw her little brother across the room, and then she tried to throw me across the room. And I was light then. She couldn't throw me across the room. Now I don't care how demon-possessed she was. And she threw me across the room, and she threw Clancy, my, my bus captain, uh, across the room, and she was just supernaturally wicked. And I thought to myself, and I had hair then, and it really stood up on my head and my back of my neck because it was so spooky. And, folks, demon possession is real. You don't believe that? Ask the Gadarean maniac when you get to heaven. But I want to tell you something: the opposite of demon possession. It's Holy Spirit possession, Amen. and the Holy Spirit fills you to love, and the Holy Spirit fills you to give, and the Holy Spirit fills you to have joy and peace and um, meekness, power under control. And so we need to realize why the Spirit of God's in our life. Number one. Is to defeat the devil. 
Turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John 4, 4. Deacons, the financial statement has not come in yet, so I do not have the six-month statement. I will keep you posted. I might get somebody to preach for me Sunday night. We'll just have it Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. But we're trying to get that financial statement in. Because I want you to see how God's blessed the last six months. But look at 1 John chapter 4, 4. We're talking about spiritual blessings tonight. What's the Bible say? The Bible says greater is, excuse me, I get it. It says you are of God little children. That's how you receive the Holy Spirit, by faith and childlike faith, by being saved. By the way, when you get saved, the Spirit of God comes in your life. Don't ever forget that. He seals you. He illuminates you. He leads you. He guides you. He comforts you. But he indwells you to have victory over the devil. Because look at this. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, he's talking about them as false doctrines and demon-possessed religionists that fight against the things of God. And so we could just sum it up. The Lord is greater than the devil. The Lord's greater than any demon. And the Lord is in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. So greater is he that is in you and so I want you to believe this with all your heart that you have a power within you and it's not a force you star trekkers and it's not some kind of it or per it's per it's the person of the spirit of God it's the Holy Ghost it's the Holy Spirit the third person of the Trinity and I know some of you look at me right now saying I don't understand the Trinity I don't either but I know the third person should control my life And so he defeats the devil. Greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. You are no match for the devil. Amen. You ought to respect the devil like you respect a snake. I don't handle them. I don't pick them up. I used to work for a pastor and he turned out to be a devil. Uh, He used to stop every time he saw a snake and pick them up. Scared the hound out of me. I don't know how in the world he knew they weren't poisonous. Matter of fact, some of them ought to bid him earlier, but I'm telling you this, friend, uh, I don't handle snakes. If you want to handle snakes, let me know where you want a door, and I'll make one through this wall. I, I hate snakes. There's two things I really hate, and that's shots and snakes. I, I'm a wimp when it comes to that. I was telling somebody the other day, Anna, you was off, and I was telling all those ladies about the time I passed out when I was 18 years old, and I made the excuse that uh, I hadn't ate in three days. Well, it had been about three hours, really, and uh, I just saw my own blood. I can see other people's blood. It don't bother me a bit, but when you see your own, you just pass out. So I always make jokes and conversations while they're taking the blood. They was taking that Monday. said it turned out pretty good. But I want you to know this. You ought to defeat the devil, but you can't. But he can. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Number two, we are in, we're indwelled by the Spirit of God to be filled to overflowing, to display his likeness, to display his likeness. We are to be conformed to his likeness. Romans 8, 28 and 29, you know the verses. He conforms us to his image. And folks, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, would you turn there with me? Colossians chapter 1, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, General Electric Power Company, how I find it, GEPC. Uh, and I can't, uh, there it is. Colossians 1.27. Look at it. The Bible says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery, ministry, mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You said, I thought you said the Holy Spirit was in you. Well, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are the same. Amen? So Jesus lives in you. Yeah, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you to make you more like him than them. To make you more like God than this world. And this whole chapter 6 is talking about separation. It's talking about suing people in verses 1 through 8. They were suing each other in the same church. How would you like to be a member of that church? And then they were committing adultery and fornication in the same church. And it was known. And he he dealt with that in verses 9 through Uh, 16, then he said, What know ye not that your body is the temple 
of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you are of God and you're not your own. And so, folks, we're to yield to the Spirit of God and let Him be who He is through us. Turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3. How many love to study the Bible? Say amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. The Bible says this, your epistles written in hearts, in our hearts, known and read of all men, for as much as ye are man, manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, books for Christ, letters for Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tablets of stone, but in fleshly tablets To someone, you're the best Bible they'll ever read. You're the living Bible. I don't like that living Bible. It's got too many cuss words and too many contradictions. It was just not in my Bible. Uh, I think a guy named Taylor wrote it and had a nervous breakdown. I believe it was. But I want you to know, friend, we need to realize the living epistle, we are one. We are a letter. We are a billboard. We are a sign. Um... We ought to be an indisputable message, not written with ink, but written with the Holy Spirit as we yield to the Spirit of God. Number three, I'll be very brief tonight. Number three, why are we indwelled with the Spirit of God? And that's to be delivered from yourself. Look back at our text. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. It says, which are, he says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple or tabernacle of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own. You're not your own. And folks, I want to tell you something. There's a lot of people who live for themselves. And thank God the grace of God not only delivers you from the power of sin, but delivers you from the power of the flesh. If you'll read verses 1 through 18, it talks about flee fornication. It talks about the body is not for fornication. It goes on to say, know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ, that what you do with your body is like taking his hand and doing it. And that's why fornication and adultery and all the things that people so it's so popular uh, they make fun of children for being virgins in high school now and all these things is is should be below the Christian's dignity you are a temple of the Holy Spirit you are a tabernacle of the Holy Spirit wherever you go he goes whatever you see he sees whatever you say he says and folks, I'll tell you what, I don't think we ought to drag Jesus down in the dregs of the cup of sin. But we ought to live on a higher level. Not a holier than thou, Christian, but I'm talking about don't go with the world. Amen. Don't go with this fornicating world, this, this world that's mutilating their bodies to become some other sex. It's killing babies in the name of liberty. That's saying I'll live like I want to. And I'm liberated to live like I want to. And Jesus and God Almighty, my Creator, can't tell me how to live. That's rebellion. And so we need to be delivered from ourself. Self-sufficiency. It's called pride. Pride. Uh, the body's not for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. That's exactly how the devil tempted Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. That's exactly how the devil tempted Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3. And that's exactly what the Bible says in 1 John 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The devil is predictable. That's his strategy. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And listen, there's no way you can dethrone pride without the Holy Spirit mortifying you, humbling you, making Jesus real. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes all this real, alive, real. Not just you know having a Holy Ghost meeting where we jump pews, but a Holy Ghost meeting where we realize His presence. We realize that He walks with us and He talks with us, but it's not just with us, it's in us. So we should be delivered from ourselves. Number four. Number four. And I believe I only got four, so y'all getting hopeful. But this will probably be the longest point. I'll try to make it brief. I appreciate y'all coming so much. I want to 
make it brief. To be distinctively Christian in order to make an eternal difference. God indwells you to be distinctively different. Uh, Tennessee Temple used to have this, Brother Bobby, wasn't it? Uh, Brother Gary and uh, Brother Al went there. A bunch of y'all went there. I mean, all uh, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Jackie went there. That's why you said amen right there, so I remember that. And Miss Rebecca went there. And all, How many of you went to Tennessee Temple? Raise your hand. Great day. We ought to have an alumni party. Brother Jeremy, he ran the place for a couple of years. You know, I'm just saying, they wanted to, their, their theme was, I'm distinctively Christian. And folks, the moment they started losing their distinctive Christianity, they went down the drain. When a guy named Al Jannings came and went to our Tri-State Preachers Fellowship and said, I'm now the pastor of Highland Park Baptist Church, and here's a Bible, the NIV, and if I want to preach out of that, I will. If we want to teach our kids this we will and just mock the King James Version to the, to the Tri-State Preachers Fellowship. You know what he did? He cut every church in Chattanooga off because we are old fashioned King James only without apology. And Folks, I want to tell you something. We ought to be distinctively different. We ought to be convicted. That's why I love Brother Jeremy's uh, series on the King James because nobody else has enough guts to preach it and teach it like he does is that, folks, that is the distinctive Word of God. Amen? Amen. That is the Word of God to the English-speaking pe people who ought to stay with the King James Bible. You said, well, the other one is so colloquial, and, you know, I got a student Bible, and I got a junior Bible, and I got a military. I don't care what kind of Bible you get. You better have God's Word. Amen? Amen. And, folks, I want to tell you something. We need to be distinctive. Distinctive. I want to say, what, say this, and I want to say it clearly and quickly. If you yield to the Spirit of God, you're going to be different. This whole chapter is on coming out from among them, being separated. Don't sue each other, verses 1 through 8. Don't go to law. He said, y'all going to run the world one day. Why are you going to law against each other? Then it said, hey, listen, don't be idolaters and fornicators and adulterers and effeminate. Good night. Is that in the Bible? Look at verse 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 9. L, B, T, Q, whatever you are, you ought to read that. It says, it says, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves. Transgenders abuse themselves. They change their body to another gender they try to. Can't change what's inside. Come on. And it says, with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if those sins are habitual, you're not saved. Amen? But it says, and such were some of you. Aren't you glad it's past tense? And it says, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. How? Look at verse 11, last phrase. And by the Spirit of our God. Amen? Amen. Folks, if you're not different, you're probably not saved or you're least quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Now then it says in verses 13 through 15, it reminds us that we're resurrected beings. It says in verse 14, 1 Corinthians 6, and God hath both raised up the Lord, and he will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall then the members of Christ make them members of harlots? God forbid. He says you're resurrected. You ought to be different than the world. You ought to be sanctified thrilled, filled, and satisfied, you ought to be filled with the Spirit of God. How do you do that? Well, here's the key. Once you get saved, you better have this key. You're saved, you pass from death unto life. So if you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 13, you'll see how to, how to have the Spirit-filled life. Romans 6, 13. Romans 6, 13. This is wonderful verses in Romans 6 13 the Bible says neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness it's talking about the body your hands your eyes your tongue your mind neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourself unto God how are you going to do that spirit of God but look at this as those that are alive from the dead. 
and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So when you're saved, you're resurrected. Can anybody say amen to that? You pass from death into life. So a resurrected being ought to be different. Every time I read this verse, I think about Lazarus. Nobody had to make him be with Jesus in John chapter 12. Nobody had to bribe him to come to Sunday school. Nobody had to pump him to come to Sunday school. Nobody had to beg him. Nobody had to go look for him and visit him five times to get him back in Sunday school. He was right at the foot of Jesus. Why? Because once he was dead and now he's alive. He's resurrected from the dead. He wants to be with the resurrecting Savior. And if you're saved, you ought to be wanting to be with him. And if you'll yield the Holy Spirit, you can't get enough of the Word of God, church, Sunday school, God's people, God's preacher, preaching. You just want to yield as those raised from the dead. And then Romans chapter 7, Paul said, but I still got something in my heart that gives me trouble. He says, that which I do, I do, look at verse 15. For that which I do, I, I allow not. For what I shall would, that I do, do not. But what I hate, that I do. And then I do that which I would not. I can send unto the law that is good. And then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now he's saved. Paul, won't you agree? Paul's saved. Look at verse 18. For I knew that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to which is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Look at verse 19. What a dilemma. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that. I don't want to get mad, sad, out of the will of God. But look at this. It says, now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The business starts picking up here, especially in Romans chapter 8. But he says in verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Inward man's referring to the spirit. For I, I see another law in my memory. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am. He's calling himself wretched, but he's not calling himself wretched. He's calling his old Adamic nature wretched. Apostle Paul has a battle with his flesh. and says, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And look at verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. And then look, don't stop just because there's a chapter heading. It says, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Who? Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. What is the law could not do? In that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That is the righteousness of, of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And then look at verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but ye are in the Spirit. And so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. That's what I wanted to get to. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I'm quitting. This is it. I'm saying this. The Bible says, if you do not have the Spirit of God, you're not saved. So don't listen to this doctrine and you've got to get it. You've got to come down and speak in tongues or you've got to do this or you've got to do that. Don't listen to that doctrine. The moment you get saved, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit comes in your life. Why does he come in your life? To defeat the devil to display, display his likeness, to deliver you from yourself and to be distinctively different that you might make an eternal difference in a lost and skeptical world. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you, dear Lord, for these simple, simple points that you gave me. But Lord, I believe at all points that we need your spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. It ought to be our prayer every day. And Lord, it's not wheeling and dealing that we need tomorrow. It's yielding. We need to yield our members, our mind, our mouth, our 
heart, our whole being, our emotions, every part of us, mind, will, and body, to the Spirit. And when we yield to the Spirit, Lord, you make a distinctive difference. And we can live a supernatural life in a sinful world. We can be the light in the darkness. We can be the salt in a skeptical, sensation-seeking world. So, Lord, we thank you that you dwell in us. And our prayer is that we yield to you and let you possess us and control us and overflow in our lives with love and thanksgiving and joy and mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I told you I'd try to be right to the point because I want you to listen to this. You're living beneath your God-given privilege if you're not yielding to the powerful Spirit of God, the third person of the Holy Trinity that's in your life. If you're just playing church, you're going through the motions, you're just trying to be religious and you're relying upon self. And that's not going to get it because the devil will pick you apart. The flesh is weak. It'll suck you down the drain. What you need is the Spirit of God dwelling and filling your life. And that means say, preacher, by the grace of God, I want to be a Christian that's filled, controlled by the Spirit of God. And I want you to pray for me. Would you lift your hand up real high? all over this place. Isn't it a wonderful privilege that God wants to dwell in your little old life? No longer we worship in tabernacles and temples. We are the tabernacle and temple. Ephesians 2, 22 of the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for tonight. I pray if there's anyone that's not been saved, they don't even have the Spirit of God in their life, help them to realize it's a futile effort trying to live without your Spirit, without your power. Because the flesh is too rich and weak and wicked. The devil is too clever and deceptive and powerful. And the world's too alluring. So Lord, help people realize they need you. And they need to be saved. Help us all that's been saved to yield totally to the Lordship of Christ through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. The stand. I hope you got the message. I hope you really got the message. You can't even worship without the Spirit of God. You can't listen without the Spirit of God. Without the Holy Spirit, you can never be the husband to your wife that you need to be, the parent to your children. You need the Holy Spirit to dwell in your life. If you're not it's saved, I invite you. Have that on one. Have that on one. 318, if you need it. Thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. He's the potter. We're the clay. He's the vine. We're the branch. He's the power. We're the temple. He's, he's God. We're the tool. Only hands he has is your hand. Only eyes he has is your eyes. The only heart that he chooses to love through is your heart. What an obligation. What a privilege. Let's sing that last verse. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own to desire. The world sees Christ in us, and that's only due to the Holy Spirit. Let's be dismissed in the word of prayer.
Uh, let's do remember, we have our services on Sunday, starting our new Sunday school series. And choir, if we can, make sure and get into the choir room uh, at about 15 till, 10 till, so we can make sure and get a practice in since I was out on Sunday. So we'll get that together uh, on Sunday, uh, 15, 10 till uh, in the choir room. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Steve, appreciate our missionary. Uh, would you please dismiss us in prayer? Verses are difficult. We sure want to reach towards them. 